Well, we're going to go ahead and get started because you all know I'm, I like to be on time. And if you were on the prayer line this morning, you know that we went through some things that I'm going to go through again. And I asked my husband to join me because as people who are called to the ministry, we believe that our calling is helping people get into their calling for uh, the kingdom of God. And so we've made it our life mission to help people who have the call of God resting on their life to help them get there. And so we do that through equipping. And so uh, one of the missions in our ministry is to win the lost, mend lives, disciple them, and then send them out. But there's another part of us that's called the teach, the teach, teach train, train, and develop. Teach, train, develop. I can't remember what it is, but we send. And so our desire is to train people for the call of God and then to get them out into the harvest fields of the world because we realize that God has called us to the world. You look at Matthew 28, it's clear. Go into all the world with the gospel. Matthew 24, this gospel of the kingdom must be preached. And so all of us get to a place where we have to come to grips with what God has put on the inside of us. I believe that there's a lot of frustrated people today because they know that they've been called or destined for something great. They just don't know what it is. And so what I want to start out this morning doing, and Skip can interject wherever he feels like he needs to, but I want to start out by reading some verses of scripture to you all. And before I do that, I want to share this. There was a point in my life where I had gotten very frustrated with where I was, and I wasn't really walking uh, in my relationship with the Father the way that I knew that I, I should. And so I was in prayer. While I was praying, I heard these words, your call is calling you. And at the time, I didn't really understand what that meant. But when I got off my knees, that just those words began to unfold in my heart. My call is calling me. And I believe that that's the case for <clears throat> a lot of people today that their call is calling them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That there are many, many people who you sense something in your heart. There's this gravitational pull to a particular thing, a particular bend, and, but you just don't have clarity about it. And so you want to say something? You know, the thing about the call of God, well, you can be called by people. People can call you and, you know, put pressure on you to do things, uh, task, can call on you mm -hmm. to put pressure on you to do things. Um, situations can do. It. And most of those things you have the ability to stop or to turn off. But when God calls you, you're never satisfied. Never. Right. You're never satisfied until what it is that He's called you to do, you begin to do. Right. And the thing about the, the call of God that's on your life is it will talk to you in your quiet time. He will talk to you when, in your chaotic times. He will talk to you when you're not even thinking about the call. But because it's on you and because it's not what's put on you, it's what's pulled out of you. Okay. There's a huge difference. Situations are put on you, but what God has placed in you is what he's pulling out of you. There's just, there's just, it's a difference. It's, and it's a, it's a notable, distinctive difference that when I tell you, I remember when I used to uh, play basketball and uh, when I was younger, when, when you finished, after you played a long time, the kids would want uh, to go to McDonald's to get that orange drink. That, that would be what satisfied. And then they would go to, as I got older, they wanted Gatorade. And then as I got older, fellas wanted to drink beer. The only thing that ever satisfied me was water. I didn't like the orange drink. I never was a beer drinker. I really wasn't a Gatorade. But the water is what satisfied me. And so how do I get that caught? The washing by the water of the word got to get that word in me yeah. to get that thing up yeah. floating to the top of my life right well I want to read these verses of scripture and you all listen to this because this is about what you have been specifically called to do and I said this on the prayer line this morning that there's a lot of people who are serving someone else you know I was standing on the the, the uh, corner of Michigan Avenue in Chicago many years ago with a dear friend and she said to me she said 
Melba, God never intended for you to pick up somebody else's vision and forget about your own. And when I when, when she said that, it just went through me. And so there are those of you that have picked up someone else's vision, and you should. That's a critical piece to you going into what help God has called else. you. You gotta help somebody else because that's how you grow. Exactly. You know, because you won't grow if you just, you know, you're one of those ones, God called me and I ain't gonna be helping nobody. Ain't nobody gonna use me, then God can't use you. Right. And so it's really important for you to understand that God uses you through the vehicle of other people. Other people give you opportunities, and in those opportunities, in those spaces, you get to grow. I never imagined that when I was in Bible college, uh, working third shift as a night auditor in a hotel with prostitutes coming into that hotel and me having to stop my job and go cater to prostitutes that God was teaching me how to care for people. I had not, up until that point, I had not really had other than caring for my children because I was a single mom, but up to that point, I had not been trained in caring for people that were not my family. And so here God was taking me through, what was I doing? I was serving a hotel chain called The Days Inn. What was happening when I was there? God was perfecting what he put on the inside of me. And the thing that we have to understand, and my, my scriptures are gonna get into this, we have to understand that you're born with this call. It's not something that you get when you get in your mother's womb. It's not something that you get when you come into the earth. And it's not something that you get when, when somebody lays their hands on you. That's why Paul says, stir up the gift to Timothy. He says, stir up the gift you know, that was placed in you or that was exploded in you really is a better way to say it. When I laid my hands on you, Paul didn't necessarily give Timothy that gift. That gift was in him. But what Paul did was he ignited it. Yeah, unlocked it. Yes, tell that tell that thing about the unlocking. You know, when um, we first started pastoring, actually, when we started, when I started maturing in pastoring, um, and just talking to God, um, we realized I realized that there was uh, my job was to unlock people. What I'm teaching, what I'm uh, showing people is to unlock them. But what God told me is there's an exchange. Because when you unlock people, and specifically the people that were at our, at our uh, ministry, when we unlock them, what happened is that next level of calling desired a new level of feeding. So in turn, when I unlock them, they then unlock another level of teaching that was in me. So we were unlocking one another. So it's so important that not only that you keep giving, because the Bible says, if you give, you shall receive it's not that it's a might that that it's a it, it's a good possibility i'm giving an unlocking so i'm going to receive an unlocking and so there's such a great exchange in helping someone else get to their next level because in turn you're learning and they are helping you get to your next level absolutely absolutely and so let's look at these verses of scripture and i want you all to pay attention to them some of them you all have been seeing forever, but thinking about them in the context that we're talking about. Romans eleven twenty nine 29 says, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. And so even if you're walking or living in sin, every sinner right now has the call of God. They're walking around with the call of God on the inside of them. I heard uh, Mark Barber, who has this huge prison ministry said, 80% of the people who are in prison today are in prison with the call of God, they've been called to the ministry, 80% of those people. And what they're doing is they got involved in things that pulled them away from the calling of God and now they're incarcerated. But 80% of the people that are incarcerated have the call of God sitting on their life. Well, everybody in there right. has a calling, but right. some of them have a specific call to be in full-time ministry. Right. That's amazing. But the Bible says that for the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 26, For you see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. But he goes on to say, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world. That's us. Yeah. We, one translation says, but God has chosen what seems to be foolish to the world to confound what seems to be wise. That's us. God has called us. And then Ephesians chapter one, verse number 18 says, Paul is praying, I want the eyes of your understanding to be enlightened. 
so that you can know the hope of his calling. What does that mean? It means that God has a hope. He has an expectation of your life that what he put in you right. is going to come out of you, but it's not up to God to bring it out of you. It's up to you to recognize or to get yourself in a place where somebody can unlock it. Mm -hmm. Somebody can help you come to the realization that this calling is in you mm -hmm. and it needs to be pulled out of you. You know, just like a door that has keys, there is somebody that either you're running from or you're up under that you're close to that has certain keys to certain areas of your life that need to be unlocked. Mm -hmm. And unless you open the eyes of your understanding to see it, you will ignore it. You'll move away from them because they don't rub you the right way. You'll, you'll separate, you'll do all those things that right. God has placed them in your life. And right. it may only be for a season. They may not be there forever. They may be just there to, to get the door open that somebody else is coming that's going to show you what's all in that room that, that you're, you're, you're going into. Right. But it's so important that when you have people around you, that you ask God, why are they here? Are they a part of the call? Are they, a, are they here to get me to that expected end right. that you have for me? Right. And when you look at them and say, okay, okay, I, I may not like your personality, but it ain't about your personality. It's about what you have that I need to finish what God has called me to do. Right, and you have grace. There's grace to work with people because, you know, I've had people ask me, how can you work with such and such? And how can you work with such and such? Don't you see that they blah, 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 blah. It's like, yes, I see it. But I have grace to work with that person because mm -hmm. for this season of their life, I'm here to give them what they need and they're here to give me what I need. And so because of that, we can deal with one another you know, the Bible says, know them that labor among you. So I, I recognize how they are and I'm able to receive from them and they're able to receive from me because we have the grace to do so. But it's critical. This is why you all need to be in the right kind of ministry. You know, people have, uh, you know, there was a season where everybody was leaving the church. Everybody was coming out of the church and, and it's cool. Okay, whatever. But I'm telling you that you will never get to the fullest pinnacle of the call of God in your life. You may have success in business, but to reach, and I'm talking about if affecting lives, yeah. the way that God has called you to affect lives, you've got to be in a company of people who believe like you, who are striving for the same thing that you're striving, and in a place where somebody can impart the wisdom of God to you so that you can get to the next level. You want to say something? I want to, I want to read this scripture. Right, keep reading. Second Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 11 says, Wherefore, also we pray always for you, that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. Second Timothy chapter one, verse number nine says, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. And so, and then there's another verse of scripture that says that before the foundation of the world, God called you. He knew you. And so understanding that, that's really important that I came into the world with God's call on the inside of me. And I know that I said this before. And so it's up to me to take that calling, to bring it before God and have him place it in front of him and say, this is what I I know that you've given me something. And if I don't know exactly what it is, I'm taking it back to him. I call it the cycle of prayer where God gives me an impression. I just start having a bend in a particular direction. He gives me a direction and I take what I have and I present it to him and say, I don't know what this is that you're asking of me. I don't know what you're looking for from me, but I'm presenting this to you. And every time I lift it to him, he sends it back to me in a stronger impression. And so what happens? And then he puts me around people and in places that help develop it and build it. Thinking about like what he did with you and Eric Thomas. Here, you knew that you were called to do something, but it took Eric Thomas to come into your life and pull something out of you, something greater out of you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And here's the thing. God will use anybody he needs to use to do that. And for me, you know, Eric Thomas really helped me to see 
who I really was. You know, there were certain things that I had been to, but I couldn't understand. And certain things I just didn't want to do. And I couldn't understand why when other people, the things that I didn't want to do, other people like, you got to do that. You got to do that. You know, that's so, but when I realized, listen, that just ain't my makeup. That's not the way I'm made. And when I realized who I really was, I then began to work on how do I develop a better me in what God has called me to do. You know, the scripture that came to me this morning was, call upon me and I will answer. And what, what I really believe is God is saying, okay, call upon me and I'll answer. But he's also saying, when I call on you, I need you to answer. Because there's so many people that are fighting the call of God on their life because of uh, church hurt, because of they've seen too much, because uh, they've been under somebody who didn't handle them right. Listen, we can be a representative of Christ or we can be a representative of our flesh. And flesh misses it. And even as representatives of Christ, we can miss it at times. But the bottom line is my calling wasn't given by a man. Right. And so I'm not looking for a man to validate it. Validate it tell me what to do. But what I can look for a man is, hey, I see some direction that I can be given that, that lines up with the word of God and lines up with what God is saying. I see that you're kind of doing the same thing. Let me partner with you. Let me hook up with you and glean from you and then take whatever ingredients you have, add it to my ingredients and make me. I'm not trying to be a carbon copy of you. I'm just trying to take some of your salt and pepper and season up my food a little right. better. But then there's even in that, you know, and I didn't want to get into that piece of it, but even in that, there's a way to do it. Right. Because what we have a lot of times is a lot of people who will come into someone else's ministry and they'll have servant or somebody else's business. Yeah. And they'll have mm -hmm. the only reason that you're there is to get yours. Well, that's not the right spirit no. because how you serve someone is how you're going to be served. Right. And you need to know that. And how you serve somebody is how you are going to be served. If you come in and your whole motive is, I'm just trying to learn so I can go get mine. The people that come into your, your organization, the people that come into your ministry, that is how they're going to serve you. And so no, your mission needs to be the advancement of the kingdom of God through ever whatever vessel you've chosen to serve. So when you come in there, you're coming in there with the right heart, with the right spirit. You're not complaining. You're not forming uh, what the Bible calls SECT sets. You're not calling clicks. clicks. You're not. You're not doing any of that, right? You're not complaining. You're not. I could do it like this, and it ought to be done like that. Being critical, right? Being that. critical. That's not because how you do yours, it, uh, theirs is exactly how somebody's going to handle yours. And so you and want to say this, and, and I want you to finish. And it's not going to come in the measure of what you sow it. Always harvest is yeah. Yeah, it's not gonna come as a right. seed. You've sown a seed, but you're gonna get a harvest back. Bigger than what you want. You right. know, and so you always have to think when I'm when I'm serving someone else, this is a seed that I'm expecting a harvest from. Right. That's why you always do it as unto the Lord. That's why right. the Lord kept saying, Do it like you're doing it for me. Right. Don't do it like you're doing it for somebody else. Because in doing it like you're doing it for me, what I'm doing in your life is I'm shaping what's coming down the path for your calling. Mm -hmm. So do what you're doing, serve people, help people, help another man's vision like you're serving me. And then in that, you got a harvest that's coming to you that's going to overwhelm your life. It's going to mm -hmm. overtake your life. But the, the, the other way, that you don't want. So anyway, so going back to the fact that the call of God is calling you. Yeah. This is what first, Second Peter Chapter 1, verse 10 says, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fail. So how do we make our calling sure? And these are some of the things that we're going to be getting into. We're going to talk about your call all week because all of you have something that God has an expectation that when you leave the earth, you're going to stand in front of the Father and there's something that he's going to say, now I put this in you, would you do with what I put in you? 
and you want to be able to give him the fruit of your labors, the fruit of your life. And I'm telling you, 100% of the time, the fruit of your labor is how you affected somebody else's life. That's what God is interested in is how is your calling affecting the lives of other people? We make it our mission. We are always, always confident that the work that we're doing is going to increase somebody else's life. I mean, and we make a lot of sacrifices to do what God has called us to do because we are so adamant about doing what God called us to do. And so at night, Skip was said, he's saying this when we started out. We walk the floors in the middle of the night praying for the people that we have been called to because those people are locked in our bowels. With every person that you've been called to influence, they're in your bowels. And so knowing that, one of the things that we have done consistently is to pray those people out, pray them out of our heart. God, every person that you have called me to touch in life for the span of my life, for my whole dash, born in 19, whatever, gonna transpire, gonna leave the earth and whatever, this whole, whatever. Right, this whole period of my life. Right. Father, every person that you have called me to touch that's a part of this calling, I'm praying for them right now. And I'm asking you to create those paths, to create those opportunities. Why? Because my call is calling me. Were you going to say and I think the other thing is, you know, the one thing that we, the other thing we prayed was, Lord, make our dash count. Whatever, again, whatever that span of life is, make it impactful. We want to make a mark on this earth that cannot be Not erased. Be erased. It cannot be erased. And so with that being said, God, you know, this, this is a long journey. What is my step today? Right, right. Just because we have to break this down into parts. By size pieces, yeah. yeah. You know, when um, I used to play basketball, um, if I wanted to score uh, 30 points that night, I would break it down into quarters. Okay, that means I'm going to have to take five shots a quarter or six shots a quarter. And if I make five of them, you know, that's at least 10 points a quarter where I'm, I'm going to end up with 40 at the, at the very least. But I broke it down into quarters. Can I just make five shots this quarter? What can you do today that will get you down that path of fulfilling the call of God on your life? Mm -hmm. Maybe today it's dealing with some character issues. Maybe today it's dealing with, okay, I'm not going to cuss today. I'm not going to just get angry today. I'm not going to cut people off today. I'm going to stick in there where, where I normally would run. I'm going to stick, whatever those things are. Today, I'm going to make sure that I stay connected to you in prayer. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever that, today I'm going to stay mindful of what your word said to me this morning and let that guide me versus my emotions, uh, my whatever that is. But what are the steps you're going to take today to get to that expected end, to finish yes. your journey, to run your race? Paul said, I finished my course. I ran, my race. I ran my race. I finished my course. So what are you doing to finish your course? Yeah. You know, uh, Skip was talking about bite-sized pieces. One of the things that I made up in my mind is for the rest of my life, every day I was going to do one thing that was connected to what I believe I was called to do. One thing. And for me, it's always about people. It's about how I can advance someone else's life. You know, the character thing, that's a consistent work all the time, all the time you're gonna be working yeah. on your character. Yeah. But the question for me was, what can I do today? Just one thing that speaks to where I'm desiring to go, that speaks to my vision, that speaks to my purpose. And so I never close out a day. There'll be some times where I've been busy doing everything else for somebody else, I'll lay in the bed and I'll sit straight up because I realized I didn't do anything to advance what God specifically called me to do. And then I'll grab my iPad, I'll grab my phone and I'll do something or I will get out of the bed. If it's writing, if it's ministering to somebody, whatever it might be, I get out of my bed and I go do something because I never close out a day without doing something that speaks to the call of God, the thing that I believe that I'm called to do. And so it's an inch by inch inch situation that you will walk out you we you know we say we pray it out then we walk it out but you gotta walk it out and it's in the day-to-day -day. that's how the plan of god is fulfilled and the call of god is accomplished in your life 
Every single day, you are doing something that speaks to what you've been called to do. Yeah. And so, what are you going to say? You know, um, you've heard the old adage, how do, you, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Mm -hmm. And so many of us are looking at the great, big, grand scheme of the call. Right, the whole thing. The whole yeah, call. The, right. God called me to nations, and you're trying to figure out nations, and you ain't even figured out your own home yet. How do I get the folk in my house saved? How do I get the you know, folk that are around me saved? And so, first of all, you know, make yourself local. Make yourself a, a local success. I remember I was uh, talking, we were talking to a music person about a, a friend of ours and getting their music out. And their question was, well, how big are they in their city? If you ain't big, if you ain't winning your city, if you ain't big in your city, you're not gonna be big in the nation. No. And so, first of all, be big in your city. What does your city look like? It doesn't have to be Milwaukee, but your city could be your family. Mm -hmm. Your city could be your home. Your city could be your cubicle, right. your job, your, your area you work. Be big there and then master that so you'll know how to take what you've done on this level and allow God to breathe on it and expand it to bigger levels. You know, David, before he became king, he learned how to protect, walk with, live with, uh, and deal with sheep on a much smaller level. Right. You know, he knew how to protect them. He dealt with the bear and the lion. He knew how to deal with that. So when big enemies came like the giant, it was no big deal. And then when bigger enemies like armies came, they were no big deal because I learned on a small scale how to deal with that kind of stuff. Right, right. And so that's really key. It really is. And what Skip was talking about, about mapping out, maxing out home. You got, they got to know your name at home first because your home base, you know, is the place where you, where you grow, where you get to develop, you know, but then there's that other side of that. Jesus said a prophet is not without honor except mm -hmm. in his own hometown. And so although your home base is where you need to max it out, it also is the place that you're probably going to have your greatest challenges is with people at home. I travel a lot. And when I go speak in other places, you know, people love you, people encourage you, but at home, you know, you got to fight, you got to fight the devils and all of that. That's a part of the journey. Just realize that all of that is a part of the journey. And so what we want to talk about this week and what we're going to talk about is you getting settle, settling yourself down into the fact that God has called you. And I don't care who you are. I don't care whether you're walking in sin. I don't care whether you saved. I don't care whether you haven't given your life to Jesus. You have the call of God residing in you. The world calls it your purpose. It's the call of God is what it is. And that the Bible, there's full of scriptures about the calling. It's there. And so we're going to be talking about that and unwrapping a lot of things this week. And I believe, you know, we pray this often, God unwrap the gifts for your people. And you all are the gifts that God will be unwrapping for somebody else's life. And so we hope that you'll continue to join us every morning here at seven o'clock. And uh, we've got some great things that we're going to share with you. We love you. God bless you. Good morning. You Have a great day. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye.